Hello, and welcome to this TE Connectivity webinar. My name is Katie, and I will be your Global Spec Moderator. Now let me introduce today's presenter. With us today from TE Connectivity is Gordon Barber. Gordon is the Director of RF Solutions. To read more about Gordon, please look at the speaker bio window right next to the main presentation window. And with that, I'd like to pass things along to Gordon to get this webinar started. So Gordon, go right ahead. Absolutely. You know, let me start with our purpose, right? And as an organization, we strive daily to accomplish this, this safer, sustainable, productive, and connected future. And what you'll find throughout TE is that our segments, business units, our people, our colleagues, all of our missions and visions are built around achieving this, pur this purpose. And whether you're in the fields of transportation, smart technology, communication, medical technology, you're going to find the same uh, desire to meet our customers' expectations and our community's needs throughout the organization. And when we look at the segments and the BUs in TE Connectivity, we have three segments that have a number of business units inside of them. <laughs> Those include appliances, industrial sensors, or the one that I'm part of, data and devices. Together, as a, as a family, TE delivers over 192 billion products annually. And in fiscal year 2020, we achieved a revenue of over 12 billion US dollars. We wouldn't be able to achieve that success without being a technology leader, which we're continuously rewarded and recognized for by companies like Fast Company or Fortune, who have given us this recognition. As well, it's evident in our 15,000 plus patents, our continued investment in our engineering and research and development groups, and our focus on new product introduction and the revenue it generates. We have really, uh, in 2021, it, for IoT, an eye not just towards expansion, but really unlocking a booming market. And there are two pieces to unlocking that puzzle, two pieces that are driving that potential. First, we have the proliferation of use cases, smart applications, security, data analysis, data mining, along with countless others. They're being introduced virtually every day to the market. And coupled with those, we have technology expansion, which facilitates those use cases. So we have low power, low data rate, such as MBIoT and CAD M1, to high data rate, low latency, like 5G, and virtually everything in between. We have complementary networks, leveraging unlicensed or licensed spectrum, which facilitate the local areas with Wi-Fi or meshing through Zigbee. We have privatized networks via CBRS, and then we have wide networks and even hybrid networks via ultra wideband, which facilitate both short range and longer range applications. And together, when you look at the technology and you look at the use case expansion, we're really starting to unlock the potential of IoT, which points us to this 25 billion IoT connections and 1.1 trillion US dollar market size. You know, I noted the, the proliferation of applications. It's expanding virtually every day, like I mentioned. And, you know, today we'll take a look at a couple of those. We'll have smart tracking in the challenges when integrating antennas into devices like telematics products or OBD dongles or asset tracking devices, for instance. And then separately, we'll touch on smart buildings, the needs that are there, which might be a little bit different. Uh, intelligent security, control and smart lighting. And again, considering when we integrate antennas into those products, what kind of challenges we have. Yeah, first, when, when we're talking about smart tracking, right, there's, there's an obvious attraction to this market. And um, when you look at the market size and two applications that we could highlight in there, commercial telematics and, and asset tracking. And when we look at commercial telematics and its anticipated market growth to 23 billion by 2024, the opportunity is ripe for continued innovation. And, and likewise, on the asset tracking size and its anticipated uh, $32 billion um, by 2024, it is also it is ripe for, uh, let's say, growth and, and high growth. And 
when we talk about the inclusion of AI, we find a set of applications which are going to drive innovation in new products continuously. Uh, as, as we might expect uh, with innovation, we have uh, no, novel products that come with that. And when we talk about novel products, we're going to have challenges. And as we get into some of the further slides, we're going to see those challenges that might arise and we're going to talk to those. When we think about uh, this space, when we think about the, the smart tracking, right, there, there's an obvious uh, challenge. It's maybe the largest challenge that comes when we integrate antennas and the importance of integrating antennas or antenna performance in the space. Uh, but it's, it's commonly overlooked. And what we're talking about is integrating multiple technologies in the desired industrial design and not only just integrating the technologies, but putting them in there with the adequate performance and cost trade-offs. And when you develop these solutions and we put these technologies inside of products, there's a large chance of potential issues that could arise. When we think from the RF perspective and we think from antennas, we can think of things like poor isolation, uh, radiation performance, or lack of bandwidth easily arising as we start to cram more technologies in a little space. And when these challenges do arise, if they're not solved effectively, the result is either inferior product or worse, unacceptable product. And, and really, this is the reality of poor antenna performance, and we can't overlook this. How to offset this or a potential solution is really to leverage a supplier or a partner with this experience. An example might be a partner like TE Connectivity where we've delivered over 1 billion antennas to the market into products that happen to have tightly integrated radio connectivity and different technologies that need to work together. When you pick a supplier like a TE Connectivity or someone that has this experience, this supplier can then uh, almost guarantee the performance or at least guarantee you the ability to decide what's best and best not choice for the products that you have and how to integrate your radios and RF. The Experience Antenna Group is going to encounter or has encountered these problems in the past. And while you as a product developer might not have insight into the kind of issues that arise, what an experienced antenna or a uh, company like T Connectivity can bring to the table is they have likely, we have likely encountered this before, if not hundreds of times before. We've developed the solutions, but also brought the products to qualification through testing and, and manufacturing qualification needs. So when we think about the antenna provider here in the challenge number one, this is really the most important potential aspect to be aware of to really bring in someone from the from the beginning. Now when we move to the other challenges, they're equally as important. They could be potentially related even to the first one, but we cannot get away from the importance of having the right partner uh, with you so that you can solve your needs. And that extends really into challenge two, right? We're here and we're talking about now the use case where we don't want to have our cellular signal interrupted, right? And what can we do here? Well, as an example, if you want your products to, let's say, integrate mobile network operator technology, say MBIOT in this case, the radiation performance of your system becomes more important than, say, uh, a, a LoRa system or a system where you may not be working with a mobile network operator. Even if you have a pre-certified device where you believe that the solution is set, you can still have a set of testing done known as OTA testing, which is going to drive the acceptance of your product or the insight to your product uh, in terms of the performance. And what I mean by that is you can measure this, these metrics known as TRP or TIS. In, while some carriers don't necessarily call out the exact performance you need there, others do to get on their network. So it may or may not be a requirement to get on a particular carrier's network. But as a product developer, 
it's still a great idea to understand how your product is performing. And you want to have a partner that not only can develop the right antenna solution for you, but then also tell you, how is my system performing? Am I meeting transmit power and receive threshold levels? Another problem that can arise when we're talking about these products is really power consumption. You know, obviously, when you have a battery powered device, you want your device to last as long as it can in the field or as long as the lifetime can. And that does have uh, some impact on the antenna design or the antenna design, should I say, would have impact on battery life. And where that comes is through this solution or through this metric that we call efficiency. And efficiency really is this metric that allows us to know how well is the antenna transmit or how well is the antenna receive? And when we talk about a power brought to the antenna and there's some losses associated with the transmit, that's the efficiency. Now, how does this come in on the battery? Let's say you're out at the edge or you're out at a location where your antenna uh, does not radiate appropriately, or let's say it's not connecting to the network well enough. The device may crank up the power so that it can talk to the base station. Well, that drains on your battery, obviously. But if the antenna has the most uh, optimized efficiency, let's say in its design, it is going to have the least amount of losses and take the least amount of power to connect to the carrier or connect to the base station in this case. So that's how efficiency comes into this equation. When we move down to now, you as a product developer, hey, I would like my product to work all over the world. I want to have one SKU that works in many locations. How do I do this? Well, the obvious solution is to have multiband cellular connectivity and location-based services through GNSS, which might be GNSS or Baidu or GLONASS, for instance. But what happens is, again, when we start to couple these products together, they are going to interact, and we need to make sure that at your product and your antenna partner, in this case, can ensure, for instance, that the GNSS functionality is working appropriately in proximity, say, to your LTE radio. And we need to make sure that, uh, for instance, the GNSS is not jammed such that we cannot actually use the location-based services, for instance, or if you happen to have uh, Wi-Fi integrated as well into this product for any reason, that the isolation between the Wi-Fi product and some global bands is not poor and such that we don't have um, the, uh, the optimized radiation performance to, to connect in all bands throughout the world. There's a lot that goes on here when we talk about integrating antenna solutions from a global perspective, say from a you know, regional perspective. So if we look back even at that challenge one and we think about integrating different radios, now it comes even more difficult or exacerbated by trying to have a single SKU, let's say, that uh, brings in a global aspect. And even more important, really, to ensure that you have the correct partners from an RF perspective to deliver the best solution for you. Then finally, you know, uh, a, a challenge might be the environmental conditions. And really, the solution is very clear, coming back to your partner, but making sure that you're specifying your worst case scenario for them. So when you think about, you know, shark, shock and vibe issues or IP related issues or wind related issues, make sure that those are clearly known for whoever your partner is so they can ensure that they design around your needs, which are, include you know, the RF performance and the mechanical performance and qualification needs, but also costs so that everyone understands upfront what it is that you're looking for. You know, in summary, I might just add, really what we're talking about here is that a lot of things can arise when you're developing a product in this space, right? And, and this is certainly not all inclusive of all of them, but the main message here is that having a partner in the antenna space is going to greatly offset the challenges that you might have. It will see those challenges up front 
and is going to deliver the information to you that as a product designer, you understand immediately what you do or do not have to do to make sure that your product is successful. Now here in this case, yeah, we'll talk about someone that is uh, that happens to be an IoT startup business, right? And this is pretty easy to envision. A lot of new companies popping up that that may or may not be experts in RF or hardware. And in this case, we have this IoT startup that was focused on global tracking, and uh, they they were using a variety of antennas that that they got off the shelf that made their devices bigger. Um, they weren't optimized for performance, and, and it was more expensive to produce, in a sense. And again, <clears throat> when you think about using off-the-shelf antennas, it is attractive. But what most people don't really understand is that although they're off-the-shelf, the problem doesn't just end there. They need to be integrated properly. And when we don't understand, as a product developer, the impact of the, going back to the industrial design, for instance, that might have on our antenna, regardless of if it's off the shelf or not, it might not be optimized. In the case that we're talking about here, we see where the device got too big, um, the performance was not great, and that it was expensive because the customer was constantly doing uh, revisions and, and troubleshooting and late to market, et cetera. Where does TE come in here? We can do a couple of things, and they're very powerful things. First, we can look at your application or your product, and in this case, this scenario, we looked and determined that this customer, they needed a custom-designed antenna. And our custom-designed antennas are able then to work precisely in your product to offset the industrial design needs, where we can ensure the connectivity is made through our testing services, for instance. But what we were also able to do was we're able to implement some onboard platform antennas. So when you look at the multiple radios, we might have a custom LTE antenna integrated, but we might have a platform GNSS antenna, for instance. And that allows us to come to market a little bit quicker because we're integrating a product that we have off the shelf into your industrial design because your industrial design, let's say, accommodates that or we're able to make sure it's accommodating. And then we may have a custom design to fit the LTE needs in the cases where our platform products aren't applicable. And we'd like to say that platform or you know commercially available products are always able to achieve uh, our customers' needs, but that's not always the case and we have flexibility to deliver both. When we're leveraging uh, you know, our custom antenna needs, we'll use our patents uh, that we referenced earlier, over 15,000 patents inside the company, which allow us to reduce the antenna size, allow us to make sure that your industrial design is able to be used, and that we can make sure that the impact on performance is reduced as much as possible to ensure optimized performance. And then finally, you know, when we look at these solutions, if they happen to be battery driven, we'll stare very closely to understand that the efficiency, while it is an important metric in, in normal evaluation, is even more scrutinized to understand what is the impact on you know, your power handling needs. And that's a good example about how uh, TE can fit in on some of these applications where you know, you may be creating a device, and in this instance, we describe the desire to use off-the-shelf uh, antenna solutions that may or may not work. And, you know, here, just a couple of products that, you know, that summarize a little bit or give an indication of what we can do when we talk about platform. And we have an example here of GNSS antenna that we can plug in, which we used in the, in the last example that was brought in for the customer. We were allowed to integrate quickly with the custom LTE antenna and move very fast. But you can also imagine now that there are potential solutions where our customers' products were able to bring in all platform or, uh, or standard product, right? So not just the GNSS, but also the cellular or low power IoT needs, even terminal antennas uh, for 4G and 5G, and then maybe for the more narrow band, low power solutions 
a little more specialized uh, antennas for those. So together, what you'll find from TE is the capability to deliver that custom product if needed, but also leveraging the, the platform or uh, you know, standard product in all cases to get you to market quickest. You know, and here just a, a little bit about the you know the market size of smart buildings, right? And the obvious attraction again in an 85 billion uh, market in 2020, up from 22 billion or 23 billion in 2014, again gives uh, indication to a lot of in innovation, a lot of products, right? And with innovation and products, not surprisingly, we have challenges, right? And so when we look at this space and we look here, we're gonna see maybe some common themes and then maybe some unique themes in this space. When we look at the challenges here, we can't avoid the first challenges that we saw last time. And we don't really need to, um, let's say, go over that again, but I can't uh, stress enough making sure that you have identified as a product designer a partner that you want to work with. Even if you believe you're going to use off-the-shelf or platform products, reach out to them, get in touch with them, understand who their technical and commercial teams are so that you can ask some questions and they can give you some advice to make sure that you're using their products adequately or potentially work with them directly. But as we move on from that and we look at maybe some unique solutions now about smart building, we have now even more severe industrial design product constraints, right? And what, what I mean by that is now, you know, for instance, uh, say you want to develop a, a smart light bulb, right? And uh, that may be, hmm, that's an interesting piece of the smart building. Let's say you, you want to be able to talk to your lighting, but how do you put an antenna in a, in a light bulb, you might ask? And, What's interesting about that is that when we think about the way we integrate or manufacture antennas now, the best partners have multiple manufacturing capabilities. So they don't just do the, let's say, the standard kind of metal forming or flexible PCB forming to kind of give you a two and a half D solution. Some partners like T Connectivity, for instance, we have the ability to include 3D antenna manufacturing. Now that can come from a couple of different perspectives. That can be from a technology known as LDS, which is a particular way to deposit metal on a piece of plastic, or even printing, depositing metal in a, in a sort of inkjet fashion onto a product. So what's nice about this is now you can start to envision in this case of the light bulb, right? Like TCI, we, we think about a product that, hmm, where's the antenna here? Well, it might mm -hmm. actually be integrated into the features, right? And you don't even know it's there because you're able to make these very unique kind of cool and interesting things, right? So, so again, when uh, that's a unique challenge that may come in this space that may not be in another that might be a little bit larger when we thought back on the previous applications we've talked about. Now here in this environment, uh, again, another piece that might be a, a challenge is the, the radiation environment itself, right? We, we can be around a lot of metal. Um, we can be next to uh, cement um, walls. We can be next to windows. We can be next to the ceiling, the false ceiling, which has metal you know, running through it, above it. There's a lot in terms of the uh, internal part of a building which actually impacts the radiation performance. And you know, your antenna partner that you've chosen, they should be able to leverage some, some characteristics or some metrics that get you the best performance. You know, they might guide you towards, if you have a critical situation where you absolutely must have connectivity, hey, you should probably have MIMO or diversity here to ensure that you have you know, the best chance at connection. Or certainly, if you have MIMO and diversity, how do we use radiation pattern optimization and different polarization schemes to make sure that your product has the best chance to transmit or receive effectively in the system you're in, you're in given this complex environment? Now, getting away from maybe the kind of RF or mechanical aspects 
um, you have a challenge where often in this space you need as a as a product designer and as a group, the company you work for, the organization you work for, you likely have a desire to get to that time to market quick. Right? Um, this is a competitive space. There's a lot of potential revenue out there, a lot of in innovation. You, you want to be first to market and you cannot afford delays and you cannot afford to miss requirements or have a product that is inadequate or inferior or doesn't work. And really that comes back to this theme of partnering. So in this example, you know, we've talked about why partner from a technical challenge. Now this is why partner from a commercial challenge, right? Partnering with someone like a TE connectivity, they're going to help you get to market fast the quickest you can with the best performance. They're gonna utilize the platform or standard products where they can, and they're gonna leverage their portfolio to give you the custom solutions to scale when you need it. And then finally, you know, sometimes people that are creating the devices or products, they're experts in one particular uh, portion of that product, but may not be familiar with all aspects of that product especially the complexity of RF. And when you, when you don't appreciate the complexity there or don't quite understand or not familiar with the complexity there, it's easy to overlook the antennas. They look like a simple structure. They look like uh, they have, you know, small amount of components, one, two, four, five, depending on, you know, what, what the solution is. And they look fairly straightforward. And you think, yeah, we can just integrate that later. It won't be a problem. The issue here is that when you underestimate that, it goes back to the theme of challenge one, goes back to the theme of challenge four, where now you don't, you're not able to actually integrate the antenna that you want. You're not able to get the performance that you want, mainly because we weren't familiar with the integration needs or the performance needs uh, to integrate antenna in a park. So really coming back to get that expert on board, choose the appropriate technologies and partner early. And by partner early, what we really mean is you have a concept. I know it's, uh, it, it may not easy to think that I should bring in my antenna partner or RF partner immediately, but really that's your best practice. Get them engaged, get a TE connectivity engaged as quick as you can to help you avoid making any issues that might prevent, you know, your radio is not working correctly or your time to market to, to not meeting your needs and et cetera. And that, that summarizes some of the challenges and solutions that we might see in the smart building side. Yeah, here, this is uh, maybe a little bit more of a broad uh, example. And what we're talking about here is, um, you know, antenna systems, they're they designed for a, a large variety of IoT applications inside of a building, right? And um, a lot of things like security, which have a, a high need for reliability, a high need for uh, data and always being up to maybe, you know, something a little bit less in terms of energy reporting, right? It's not necessarily important to be up 100% of the time. You can reissue some packets or reissue some information if you miss it the first time. Uh, but then you might have, again, going back to something that might be, uh, you know, uber important to stay on top of all the time in terms of, you know, maintenance for equipment that you have or if there is, a, you know, a severe problem. So um, a lot of different applications, a lot of different needs here. And, and so where does TE fit in this space? First, we have a global antenna team uh, located throughout the world. And what I mean by that is, so we have a group in the US that can help upfront with your technical needs, get you conceptual work, do some testing, same kind of group in the uh, Europe region, same kind of group in Asia. And we're able to get you the information that you need, whether that be passive or active testing and things like LTE or CADM and MBIOT, regardless of what region you're in, very quickly. We have a, a broad portfolio of products that are platform or catalog in nature that run from 400 megahertz to seven gigahertz. 
They can be both onboard solutions. They can be cabled solutions, again, depending on the need. As I mentioned earlier, this 3D antenna manufacturing capability all under one roof. We are a global leader in this 3D manufacturing known as LDS technology. And then finally, this TTM or this optimized TTM where we have a broad portfolio on the platform side, an extensive technology patent portfolio, an application specific group or organization, the way we group our engineering teams to make sure that we're quickly able to address your problems. And then again, that comes 20 years with over a billion antennas delivered. So when we talk about in the smart building and where does TE fit, well, we fit in all of these scenarios. Whether you have something that is, you know, again, very mission critical in nature, where you might be using a full LTE Cat 4 for video, HD video, or you know, even a higher category, we can not only integrate the antenna solution for you, but ensure your con connectivity through you know, the OTA testing, or something that might be a little less sensitive to the needs in terms of the performance or in terms of the connectivity uh, products and platform products and custom products that fit that need as well. Globally, doesn't matter where you are. And, and maybe just a, a quick comment again on you know, some of the products that we have that fit in that space. On the left-hand side, you know, just a quick example of what a, you know, a custom more, maybe more complex custom product that we had done at one point that then becomes part of our arsenal of platform products where we have integrated plastic assembly with a variety of antennas integrated that you could drop into your product in the case of this 4x4 Wi-Fi with a cellular application as well. And then some of the products that we talked about previously, you can see here how our platform products can leverage across different applications. We're able to integrate them quickly to get your product to, to market faster. If I was going to leave the group today with one message, that is really find your partner. Get someone that you enjoy working with and that can deliver those solutions for you. I believe you know, that TE can do that. We have an, this extensive portfolio, both in the standard or platform products, a long history of developing the customized antenna products for these tightly integrated needs. And then again, as I noted, the, the global design and support services. And you know, if we, we add that into the 20 years that we have behind us in developing antennas in this uh, complex antenna systems, let's say, for industrial and consumer products. Um, we believe that we're the partner of choice here and that we can meet our customers' needs across all spectrum in this IoT space and all products. And please reach out to us. Please partner with us. Please let us know how we can help. Gordon, thank you so much for that great presentation. All right, we're going to wrap the webinar up right there. A huge thank you to all of our audience members for being part of this webinar event. Take care, and we will speak with you soon.